and welcome to this episode of The Analyst Angle. My name is Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at The Cube Research. And today I am thrilled to be joined by a relatively new colleague and fellow analyst, Bob LaLiberté. Bob, welcome. We're so glad to have you as part of our team. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Well, we are going to dive in today to some of the week's most interesting tech news. And I say that, I say that, and it kind of gives me pause because I feel like this is a week that's just been packed with tech news. So, you know, narrowing it down to six or seven topics is not necessarily easy. But this week, we're going to talk a little bit about Kindrel's newly announced, newly announced alliance with Cloudflare. We're also going to talk about Cloudflare's acquisition earlier this month of multi-cloud networking startup Nefeli Networks. We're going to cover Dell's expansion of its Gen AI solutions portfolio in collaboration with support from NVIDIA. We'll touch on some exciting news out of NVIDIA's GTC event this week, which was packed with announcements, and uh, including announcements around NVIDIA and VLink and 6G research platform. And last but not least, we'll touch on some news from Nile, introducing the industry's first AI networking solution with performance guarantees. So lots of news. So first we're going to dive into news of the Kindrel Cloudflare Alliance. I'm stumbling over the word Cloudflare today for some reason. Um, this, this alliance was announced earlier this week between Kindrel and Cloudflare, and it is not surprisingly designed to speed IT modernization and drive transformation, multi-cloud innovation, and zero trust security. So for starters, like who is not focused on speeding transformation and IT modernization and, and all of that sort of thing. So this was not surprising at all. Um, Cloudflare, this is not a new partnership between Cloudflare and Kindrel. They first partnered in the spring of 2023 on some infrastructure modernization with end-to-end -end capabilities um, and bringing Managed One as a service and Cloudflare Zero Trust to the entire corporate network. So this is not a new partnership. This is kind of an extension of, of an already existing partnership. And Bob and I spent some time early this week with the Kindrel team talking about this and, you know, how we're seeing in the industry a movement of enterprise networks away from sort of dedicated backbones to different types of cloud, right? That's kind of very, becoming very common. We're seeing a move towards SaaS applications, and there's a very real need to transfer data between locations. And building these competencies, uh, building competencies around these things has been a major focus for Kindrel. And that's true that I think a lot of their partnerships. Um, in our briefing earlier this week, you know, we talked a little bit about the fact that data center networking is starting to resurge a little bit as not everything is moving from the cloud. And I'm laughing because about this because, you know, we've had a lot of conversations here about this. And, you know, there was a time when everything was moving to the cloud, right, Bob? And, you know, and that was what everyone's focus was. And then as people started to move to the cloud, cost became an issue. And and then with the advent of AI and Gen AI and and concerns about data privacy and data security, all of a sudden, you know, on-prem uh, is not all that unattractive either. So it's just kind of an interesting thing, um, you know, as we're seeing things start to settle out now and many companies are keeping their data centers, but they need to refresh those. And, and so it's Kindrel, of course, is seeing a bit of a resurgence on that front. Um, but, you know, networking is kind of your gig, Bob. Talk a little bit about what you feel or uh, what you thought when you were thinking about this alliance. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it brings together a couple of great, I think, expertise areas and that Kindrel is really focused on bringing expertise to bear to help organizations get through their digital transformation, yeah. help them accelerate modernizing their environments. And you've got a company like Cloudflare that's got just a superb network and a lot of connectivity points across the globe that enable yeah. organizations to be able to transfer that data. So there's no doubt that organizations are becoming far more distributed than they ever were, right? Applications, as you've mentioned, in private data centers, multiple public clouds, SaaS environments, right. and also at the edge, right? When you're starting to think about AI, being able to collect that data, analyze that data in real time. And so there's a real need as these organizations are trying to accelerate that transformation to have the expertise available to them to be able to accelerate it. 
And so that's what I think when I think about Kindrel, that's what they bring to bear. They've yeah. got the expertise. They've been there. They've done that. I think they talked about eating their own dog food. They went through their own modernization <laughs> first and went off. And yeah. so it gives them a great ability to help organizations get through some of those hurdles that they would otherwise might struggle to get over. And the integration with Cloudflare, you know, from a networking perspective, when you've got this distributed environment, you need to make sure everything's securely connected and it needs to be performant. And so one of the things that we've seen over time is that organizations struggled when they went to SD-WAN and they went off their dedicated MPLS networks and they went to just using the, you know, the cloud broadband, the internet broadband, right. that they would be impacted by performance issues. So this is unique in that because of there's so many access points that they have, I think they said they're like 50 milliseconds of latency from, I don't know, like 85, 90% of the, the, the world population type of thing. Right. It gives it gives Kindrel the ability to get that traffic off of the internet and onto a private backbone that can that Cloudflare offers to be able to drive that performant networking connectivity and the secure network connectivity from any of their locations to any other locations that they need to connect to. So from that perspective, doing this alliance makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a multi-cloud wor world, right? And it, and not only is it a multi-cloud world, it's a world where I, I don't know that there's any concern that's more pressing these days than security. You know, I, I mean, obviously, I know everybody's rushing to embrace AI, and that's great, but security also... <laughs> plays a huge role there. So I thought this was a, this was a smart move. And, you know, as we talked about earlier, you know, you've got Kindrel's consulting services and expertise in enterprise networking and security and resiliency. And this pairs so nicely with Cloudflare's connectivity cloud and, and that cloud offers security performance and, and flexibility all in one. And I think that, you know, what we see too, Bob, I think that, you know, customers, really want simplicity. They want simplicity. They want vendor partners, I think, who are going to meet them where they are and who are going to be able to bring the expertise that they have in working with other customers and, and solving for some of the same challenges. Um, and, and all of that helps shorten time to ROI. It helps minimize costs and that sort of thing. So, so I think that, um, you know, what's, what's interesting about this too is that I think customers already know of, of Cloudflare, but I think sometimes they're not aware of some of the capabilities that Cloudflare brings, brings to the market and, and how it really operates as a consumption-based cloud model. And I think this, this kind of lifts both companies up. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like we, you'd mentioned earlier, the acquisition of Nefeli just a couple of weeks ago, and when you talked about trying to, you know, simplify those, those environments. And so when you bring technology like Nefeli, that's basically looking to abstract the complexity of connecting to multiple different clouds. So it says, essentially you just have one interface that a lot that you need to learn to connect to multiple different clouds it really drives that operational efficiency across yeah. your environment. It en en enables and empowers the network to be able to say yes. When the, when the business comes to it and says, we want to connect to this cloud. Now we want to connect to this yeah. other cloud, right? So that really helps to accelerate again, that, that time to value for those organizations and being able to connect to those clouds. So much greater agility, much yeah. greater operational efficiency, and ultimately delivering a better experience for those users in the enterprise and their customers. You know, I did an, uh, an an interview earlier this week with Gretchen Tinnerman, who's also with Kindrel, and and um, she leads the telco, media, and entertainment and technology sector for Kindrel. And uh, our conversation centered a lot on sustainability. And I think that it's it, worth mentioning that sustainable networking is a thing. And uh, Cloudflare's connectivity cloud eliminates the need for hardware and traditional networking equipment. And then this combined with Kindrel's expertise in stack, mitigate, uh, stack migration and combined with Cloudflare's global network services allows customers to integrate sustainability into their business models. And I think that that is a big goal for a lot of companies these days. And, and I think you touched on this a little bit earlier, but data from Cloudflare claims that migrating from on-prem network hardware to Cloudflare's cloud-based services can decrease related carbon emissions between 78 and 96%. Okay, those are big numbers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of that, it's right there. They're eliminating the on-premises infrastructure. 
So yeah. the associated power, the heat, the cooling, all those things that go with it. So anytime yeah. you can get something out of that raised floor space, it's definitely going to be saving you a lot of money. And in this case, also making your organization a lot more sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I think that, you know, we, this conversation has gone back and forth between, you know, on-prem isn't necessarily going away. And in many instances, that's a solution that works for people, but the reality of it is cloud is important too. So I think that, I think this is a great, uh, this is a great alliance and I'm glad to see it. And, you know, you already touched on the um, Nefeli acquisition news. And I think what's interesting here is, you know, for me, what jumped out is that we touched on this again earlier, but, you know, complexity. Um, and as technology advances and solutions advance, it, you know, things just become so complex and not every organization has um, depth on their IT team. Skilled talent is still a very, very real thing. And so when you have complexity being identified regularly as the biggest barrier to innovation, and then you have um, then you have alliances like this or acquisitions like this that speak to solving for this and bringing scalability and simplicity together to help revolutionize multi-cloud networking. I think that that's a win for everybody all the way around. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it, it's really, again, this high, highly distributed environments do create a lot of complexity and it's not like your, your IT team can't understand it and learn it. It's that they just don't have the time to dedicate to be getting fully trained on a lot of these new technologies. And that's where a company like Kindrel can come in with their methodology. They've already got a lot of the advanced training and certifications on this newest and latest and greatest technology. And again, it's just really about how do you accelerate that transformation? How do you get it up and running quickly? And then either Kindrel can help continue to manage the environment or turn it back over to the IT team for them to, you know, once they get up to speed, to be able to handle it themselves. Absolutely. Well, speaking of the need for speed and, uh, you know, now that I've got Maverick in your head and Tom Cruise in the goose, um, I think everybody's focused on speeding AI initiatives. And that is what the Dell Gen AI Solutions collaboration with NVIDIA that was just recently announced is all about. And, you know, helping enterprises speed AI adoption. And so Dell's expansion of the Dell Gen AI Solutions portfolio in collaboration with NVIDIA is all about helping companies speed their AI initiatives. And um, so, so Dell said that their AI Solutions portfolio has been expanded. This includes the new Dell AI factory with NVIDIA. And, you know, I think that, I feel like we're all in the race, Bob, you know, it's, it's the AI race and, um, you know, how can, who can get there quicker and who can get time to value shortened and who can really be leveraging AI in the most innovative ways possible. Um, I think that, you know, every organization feels like we're all running that race together, right? And even analysts are running that race because we're trying to keep up with all of it and, and really understand what's happening and be able to offer our insights and guidance to customers. Um, but in this AI race, easy solutions that are designed to help companies quickly adopt and integrate and realize the benefits of AI are, are really becoming the norm. And all of that starts, of course, with high quality, clean data. Um, and that's part of what this generative AI solution the, from the end-to-end -end AI solution from Dell delivers. So just I'm going to touch on a couple of things from Dell's announcements here. So the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA integrates Dell's compute, storage, client device, software, and services capabilities with NVIDIA's advanced AI infrastructure and software suite. And all of this, of course, is underpinned by a high-speed networking fabric. This is delivered as a fully integrated solution provides testing and validation combined with that high-speed networking fabric. And again, this is all about helping customers quickly transform data into insights that they can use. You know, you have data sitting around that you can't touch or you can't really analyze for even a period of a day or two. All of it, you know, old data is not really all that valuable. So being able to use as, as much real-time data as possible, or as close to real-time data as possible, I think is really important. Um, Dell AI Factory with NVIDIA is available globally through the traditional channels as well as De Dell Apex Now. Um, 
Let's see. Dell also announced they'll collaborate with NVIDIA to uh, introduce a rack scale, high density liquid cooled architecture that's based on the NVIDIA Grace Blackwell super chip. And this is designed to support the next gen ecosystem and, and provide a foundation for performance density and AI workloads, which is a very real concern these days. Um, we've also got Dell, uh, Dell Gen AI solutions with NVIDIA um, uh, focused on RAG, which leverages the new microservices in NVIDIA AI Enterprise. And it, that helps uh, provide a pre-validated full stack solution that again, allows enterprise adoption with RAG. And this should help with model quality and results accuracy and proprietary business data and knowledge basis. This is globally available now. Dell Gen AI solutions with NVIDIA model training is is also, it's a pre-validated full stack solutions for companies who want to build their own custom domain specific models. So developers, this should make you happy. And the model training capabilities will be available in April. So next month, the Dell Data Lakes House is now in GA and it's an open modern data lake house that is designed to help organizations discover and process and analyze data in one place across hybrid and multi-cloud environments. And the Dell, Pow Dell PowerScale is the world's first Ethernet storage solution validated with NVIDIA's DGX SuperPod with DGX H100 systems and designed again to help customers uh, get faster, more efficient AI storage. This is globally available now. Whew, what a list that is. So lots of things going on with Dell and NVIDIA. And, um, you know, it was with NVIDIA GTC happening this week. There are lots and lots of announcements. Dell certainly is not the only company who is partnering with NVIDIA and taking advantage of all, all that NVIDIA has to offer. So I think that's pretty cool. It, it, my last point on Dell and um, these announcements is that I really like seeing Dell's professional services for Gen AI, and this is expanding with support from NVIDIA AI, and it provides infrastructure experts that are there to help customers integrate, manage, and secure these solutions more quickly. And Dell implementation services will now include capabilities to, the, to deliver that new RAG solution, model training, Dell Data Lakehouse, and then the advisory services. The advisory services will be available in select countries starting later this month, a week from now, the 29th of March. So I, I'm just such a fan. And I know you hear me say this on, on briefing calls on a regular basis, Bob, but I'm really a fan of consulting services. I'm really a fan of, um, again, I think that I've been in a position where I've been a technology buyer and the reality of it is I'm looking for a solution to solve my problem, but what I don't have is a ton of time. And sometimes what I don't have is a ton of resources to kind of unpack how it is I'm going to use this, how I'm going to deploy it, how we're going to spur adoption, how are we going to put policies and procedures in place? How are we going to put guardrails in place? Like all those things. So for me, I really, really like seeing professional services offerings that are part of these technology solutions because I know that I'm not alone on this front and I know that customers need help in making all this happen once they've made a decision. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And like I said, I think it's, you know, you're seeing a lot of the AI technology right now. It's been largely the domain of the hyperscalers, right? Yeah. Yeah. AIs, et cetera, Google's, Amazon. And so now what we're starting to see is it's going into the enterprise. And so again, like we were just talking about in our prior session, that organizations don't necessarily have the skill sets to take it on. It's a new technology. They don't have time to get trained on it, but they want to deploy it quickly. So working with organizations like Dell, enable organizations, right, that have blueprints where this is how it fits for this type of a model, or maybe this type of an industry where they've already pre-tested, pre-validated the design and yeah. all that work, it really helps them to speed up the adoption of bringing this technology into their environment. So yeah, absolutely. It's great to see that they're, they're working together like this. And I know, you know, certainly it was great. Adele got multiple call outs during the keynote um, from Jensen this week. So it was clearly, this is an important relationship yeah, for them, absolutely. but we've also seen them. We've also seen, you know, NVIDIA, work with other companies. So there was uh, just a brief announcement with, with Cisco, for example, to drive solutions uh, through Cisco's channel as well. 
So yeah. NVIDIA is not being very picky. They want to be able to drive as much adoption into the enterprise <laughs> to whatever channels that they can. And, it's uh, a smart and take, strategy. Right, take right. advantage of it while they've got it. So let's, so with that, we're going to shift now to talk about some of the news coming out of NVIDIA's GTC event this, this week. And, you know, I laughed, I saw the event being called the Woodstock of AI by both NVIDIA employees and analysts. And, you know, NVIDIA, if you're watching or listening to this webcast, I probably don't need to tell you that, you know, NVIDIA is the first company to reach a 2 trillion market cap. It's zoomed past a whole lot of companies, including Amazon to become the third most valuable company in the world. And, and the reality of it is that I think it's safe to say that NVIDIA rarely disappoints. Um, it, Jensen Wang is incredibly strategic. And every time you think that you've seen, you know, the most innovation that you can possibly see, I think they come along with something else. So some of the big news coming out was that NVIDIA unveiled its new AI chip, Blackwell, which is named after mathematician David Blackwell, who is, by the way, the first Black scholar inducted into the National Academy of Sciences. So I uh, applaud NVIDIA's naming conventions. Uh, the Blackwell computing platform includes the new B200 chip, which is made up of 208 billion transistors, and it'll be faster and more powerful than its predecessor, the, the highly sought after $40,000 H100 chip named after computer scientist Grace Hopper. Um, and, and Jensen said in his keynote on this that, you know, Hopper is great, but we need bigger GPUs. And that's what Blackwell is, a very, very big GPU. And and uh, he shared that Google's Alphabet and uh, Microsoft and Oracle are all prepping to use Blackwell. Uh, Microsoft and Google are two of NVIDIA's largest customers for their H100 chips. Um, and, uh, I know that, uh, Jensen also shared some news of some new partnerships with software makers, companies like Cadence, Ansys, Syncopsys, and he shared that Cadence is building a supercomputer with NVIDIA GPUs. Um, the company's AI foundry is working with SAP and ServiceNow and Snowflake and Bob, I'm sharing that because it validates your point. NVIDIA isn't fooling around. They're not wasting any time, and they're working with pretty much all of the key players in the technology ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, their their goal is, you know, they he sees it as uh, it's almost a religion, right? We need to get yeah. AI out everywhere. We need to get it into every industry across yeah. all of the panels. And so I think they're doing their best to drive adoption. And, of course, there's some business benefit to that as well as they drive follow-on things as they've got their inference software, the NIMS that they're rolling out that can go on top of all of those GPUs that they've now sold, um, yeah. right? So they're really, they're starting to expand. So that land and expand strategy, you love our GPUs, that's great. We can also help you with the inferencing side as well. Yeah. And being able to, you know, maybe make a little bit money. It's uh, it's not hardware, but it's, uh, you know, that software revenue is a, a really nice margin for them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I, I know that Michael Dell was in the audience at NVIDIA GTC and I laughed when I saw uh, Jensen's comment and he said, every company will need to build AI factories and Michael Dell is happy to take your order. <laughs> so uh, obviously Dell and NVIDIA have a close relationship, but NVIDIA has close relationships with lots of other vendor partners. I know there was some other news coming out of NVIDIA that caught your eye. Um, you want to touch on that? Yeah, certainly, you know, from a from a networking perspective, and a lot of it wasn't covered. Uh, some of it was covered on main stage, like some of the things around the NV link and things like that, how they were expanding the number of GPUs that they could network together. But there were also some things that came out around their quantum line and their spectrum line. So that's the the quantum is the InfiniBand. So 800 gig, end to end 800 gig for uh, InfiniBand, 800 gig for Ethernet. And that's tied in with a lot of their their super NICs, right? Some people call them smart NICs, et cetera. Uh, so to be able to drive that end to end, and that's really, you know, what we're talking about when we're, when we're talking about these networks in the 800 gig, it's all about the, the back end right. of the inferencing models and things like that and the alert large language models that are being driven and need that kind of performance. So typical networks, you might have, you know, 10 or 25 feeding into 50 or 100 and then going up to 400. The difference is when you've got these models it really needs 800 from end to end. It needs that full pipe all the way, uh, all the way through. So it's um, something that's that's needed, and it's interesting because we're seeing this. Uh, I refer to this as networking for AI, the networking yeah. products that support the AI infrastructure. And so you're seeing a lot of 
in addition to NVIDIA providing services like this, we've seen everyone else come together and create this ultra ethernet consortium to address it. And so companies like Arista and Cisco and others, Juniper are all coming together to figure out how they can better implement and drive down the cost of this backend network by leveraging ethernet products. Yeah. Yeah. Ethernet is not dead. No, I don't. I think it was uh, Bob Metcalf that said, I don't know what's going to come after ethernet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be called ethernet. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, you, you, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to count it out. Yeah. What is that? The news of my death has been gradu uh, greatly exaggerated. I don't know where that line comes from, but it just popped into my head as we were talking about, uh, yeah. as we were talking about Ethernet. So, but I think also there was some news out about NVIDIA's NVLink and their 6G research platform. You got any insights yeah. to share on those things? Yeah. The NVLink was the, that was the one I was talking about at the beginning. That was the okay. direct copper that allows you to scale your GPU clusters and things like that. So making you know, 8, 10, 20, 30, 40 GPUs act as one to really scale up the performance. And then- By the way, I want to stop you here and say, have you had the opportunity to talk with John Furrier about his whole clusters theory? Because I think we're actually seeing this coming to light, but he's very hot on clusters is the next iteration of this. I have I have heard him talk about it. We yeah. haven't had a detailed discussion yet, but I'm looking yeah. forward to that, absolutely. Yeah. And then absolutely. the other piece, this wasn't mentioned on main stage, uh, but it was in the analyst breakout session that we had with Jensen. We started talking about how he's helping or looking to help the telco environment and what he's thinking. They've created this uh, 6G uh, research platform. And essentially, it's looking at the RAN aspect, right? The radio antennas and so forth right. and figuring out how to make them a little bit more differentiated, make them more software defined. And so they can add AI in at that level and try and optimize each of those radio antennas based on the individual environment that they're in. And they believe that by doing that, now this is very different. So right now everything's standardized. All the antennas are produced by the Ericsson's, the Nokia's and so forth and right. others. There are efforts to make it, you know, VRAN, virtualized RAN and open RAN to open up and make it more open for, for work. But what, what they're actually pushing for is to really open up those RAN antennas and allow AI technologies to run on them so they can optimize them. And they truly believe that by doing so, they can optimize the performance while also reducing the power. Um, I think they call it the 6G because 5G is sort of set and it's off and running. But yeah. they're looking at for that next iteration, how they can leverage those GPUs into those into those RAN environments to be able to Again, optimize the performance while also we talk about sustainability by dramatically reducing the power. And they think that the numbers that he threw out were potentially as much as 95% reduction of power. So I know. a lot yet to be proven on that, but yeah. certainly it shows that they've got a great imagination and how this AI technology can be used in a wide range of industries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that this is going to be the topic of conversation, Bob, across our industry for the foreseeable future, how to get the power and efficiencies that you need, but how to do it in a way that is um, that conserves power, that helps keep costs in line. And I mean, that to me is definitely a key part of the equation here that everybody's working to solve toward. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah, AI, AI, AI is great, but it chews up a lot of power. It does. So, yeah. You know, I, I, on that front, it's funny. I saw a quote um, a week or so ago from Sam Altman um, about people looking uh, at AI experts who are looking for jobs. And, you know, obviously they're highly sought after right now, right? People with deep AI expertise. But the first question they ask anybody who's interested in hiring them is, what does your GPU situation look like? <laughs> because if it's not attractive, they're not taking a job. Yeah, I can see that. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought that was funny. Okay, we're going to wrap our show by talking about some news from Nile, introducing what they call an industry-first AI networking solution with what I really like, uh, performance guarantees. So I know that this is some news you've been following, Bob. Let's hear about it. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who are 
aware of Nile. This is a, a network as a service company. It's got uh, one of its founders you may have heard of. It's a gentleman by the name of John Chambers. He was also, after leaving Cisco, he's created multiple startups. Another one you may have heard of uh, was Pensando. They got sold to AMD, doing a smart yeah. card, things like that, democratizing them. But Nile's mission is to fundamentally look at the way networks, and in particular campus networks, have been designed and built, and how to deliver them as a service to organizations to make them much easier. So they've been doing this, and they're looking at it from a holistic point of view, all the way through from going out, assessing the site, doing the designs, bringing it back in, deploying them and managing them. And mm -hmm. what they come out with today or this week is uh, really a whole AI architecture centered around that process. So not just, you know, we talk about, uh, I was just talking about networking for AI. In this particular instance, we're talking about AI for networking. How can AI technology help you better design, implement, and manage a network moving forward. And so what they've done is, uh, in addition to the AI technology, they've built out a full digital twin of yeah. the network that they're deploying. But the the actual AI technology assists in every step. It's not just about the troubleshooting and the predictive analytics. Right. It's also assisting organizations and how they capture the data from the site surveys, how they then design right. it, how they implement the in, in that, in that particular environment. And then also on that back end in day two, how they're able to manage it. So they've got a number of different things that they announced. And as you mentioned, this all comes with that service service level guarantee, right? With which I with love. Yep, I, I mean yep. to me that just it that just it's, that just says I am coming to the party and I'm not fooling around. We are so confident in this solution that we guarantee it. I love that. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And like I said, and they've got some they've got obviously some some history to go by. They've been deploying now for over a year or so. Yeah. Uh, I think they, the, the numbers that I saw, they 300% growth last year in a time when networking from a lot of the majors was down, a lot of that due to this catching up with the supply chain and all that and digestion issues. But regardless of that, you've got a company that's definitely on the rise. It's getting a lot of attention, certainly without, you know, it, it's nice when you have founders like uh, Pankaj Patel and, and John Ooh. Chambers who are helping yeah. to drive it. But certainly the technology is super innovative and that's what they're showing with this announcement so what they were doing before was impressive now they've added a whole lot of technology on top of it to help mm -hmm. drive greater efficiencies to streamline the process of implementing of onboarding and then of troubleshooting in day two so they've got some co-pilot and autopilot technologies that help with the onboarding and help with the troubleshooting and it's just really something that allows organizations to be able to move more quickly to be able to adapt and update the network non-disruptively. So fully automated, you know, patches, security patches. So reducing mm -hmm. vulnerabilities, being able to do upgrades on the fly as well that don't disrupt. So again, what they're thinking of is, and you said like the performance guarantee, they're, they're ultimately what that results in is far better experiences for everyone who's using that network. So they have always on connectivity. It's always delivering an optimized performance. And you've got the back end, that technology that's helping organizations to ensure that it's that way. And even things like, you know, I'm a big fan of the digital twin technology that yeah. enable organizations to, before they make a change, to validate it against that digital twin and ensure yeah. it doesn't create an issue and then go ahead and deploy it. Well, and I think too, you know, the integrated security and the cloud native uh, service delivery and the AI powered closed loop automation to campus and branch IT infrastructures, like all of that, that's, those are all, you checking all the right boxes. Yeah, they, they did their homework. And like I said, when they've, when they came out with the original iteration, uh, very impressive with what, how to the length that they went to, to ensure that they could deploy something very quickly, get it up and running. Uh, with minimal interaction from the team that was on premises there. And now what they're doing is they're just really not only enabling themselves, but also they're a, they're hundred percent channel. So yeah. all of their channel partners to be able to deliver this managed service much more efficiently and to deliver better experiences to those end users as well. Yeah. The need for speed, addressing that to better customer experiences, greater security, all the things that people, you know, less complexity, um, uh, assistance and guidance and consulting services when you need it, all important parts of the equation, I think, today 
um, in this world that we're living with and in, in this world that we're living in. Um, you know, and with that, Bob, I think we covered the gamut today, Kindrel and Cloudflare and Cloudflare and Afeli and Dell and NVIDIA and, um, and what's going on with Nile and news out of NVIDIA GTC. I think we, I think we did a lot. So absolutely. It's been a busy week. <laughs> Lot. It's been a busy week. And I will say that even though I feel like we've covered some really interesting news, I feel like, you know, this is a tip of the iceberg. But I think that, you know, we're also um, for I think that for those of you in the technology space, you know, this is the beginning of busy season. Right. I think, Bob, we're on the road, you know, all the time in the coming months. And so there's a lot happening. There's a lot more news that's happening. I'm heading to Enterprise Connect next week at Orlando, where it's going to be all focused on all things collab and 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 CX and contact center and all of that. So looking forward to sharing that news. But with that, we're going to wrap this show. Bob, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you here again very soon, I'm sure. And to our viewing and listening audience, as always, thank you for hanging out with us. And we'll see you again soon.